Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar series, Building Social Connectedness in a Very Disconnected World. I'm Susan Bryan. I'm the Senior Director for the Greenhouse Project, and I'm really thrilled that you're joining us today, and I hope that you have been joining us through this series as we've really unpacked what we can do to really try to maintain that social connectedness at a time that has been super challenging for sure. So some of the things we've talked about, we started this webinar series really unpacking research and what research has shown us. We then kind of moved into design and the elements of design and how design um, can support social connectedness. From there, we talked about the role of technology from there, we went to the dignity of risk and thinking about how we've got to almost negotiate risk to be able to support elder autonomy and connection with the understanding of safety and that element of risk. So today, I'm really excited that we're going to be talking about how to remain connected and engaged and really build upon the conversations that we had actually all throughout the session, but especially in our third series in this episode. You know, our uh, theme this year is going beyond better, go beyond better. And it's in our quest to really go beyond just good enough, but to really achieve that beyond better. So let's do a couple polls before we get started today. So Janet, if you wanna launch that first poll. How many of you are using technology to promote social engagement with elders? So if you want to just take a moment and let us know what you're doing um, in terms of using technology to promote social engagement. And I don't know about you, but I think I've learned a lot about technology during the pandemic and how it can be so such a useful tool in being able to make those connections. We'll take just a few more seconds for you all to participate in the poll. All right, Janet, I'll have you stop that poll and let us know how we voted. All right, so really, oh, how interesting. Only 7% of you said not at all but almost a 50-50 split between you're using it every day or you're using it weekly. That's fascinating. So let's go to the second poll. Always interested to hear what you've got to say. How has your use of technology changed during COVID? Has it increased as a result of COVID? Has it decreased or has it been about the same? You were pretty tech savvy. Or maybe you weren't tech savvy and it, you're still not tech savvy, but interested to see how it has changed during COVID. And again, I know for me, I, I think we were doing Zoom long before Zoom became a necessity, but that having been said, I think I have certainly, I would vote increased. All right, couple more seconds. Thank you for participating in this poll. All right, Janet. Wow, <laughs> how interesting. So 94% of you said that it has increased and I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I, I think it really became um, an essential ingredient to really keep people connected. So Go Beyond Better is our theme. As I mentioned earlier, we're really excited to see what we can do at this moment in time to leverage what we've learned during the pandemic and go beyond better to make those meaningful differences. I want to thank our uh, sponsor, um, Jack York. Here's a slide here, let me do this before we move on. Introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, we really want to get to know who you are as well. So please feel free to introduce yourself and where you're um, calling in from. But thank you, Jack York, and it's never too late for being our sponsor for this series. I have said often that we are grateful for sponsorships, but especially that of it's never too late and really appreciate the passion and the enthusiasm 
can. Let's face it, the actual technology that it's never too late has brought at such a time as this. So Jack, I am grateful once again for your partnership and uh, grateful for all you've done to really bring some, some flavor, shall we say, to this, uh, this webinar series. Jack? Yeah, you, you, Susan, usually you, uh, you get rid of me about two minutes into this thing. I, I'm, you know, thanks to you and Claire, I'm sticking around for a while this time. But it is, uh, it, you know, it's fascinating looking at the, at the poll questions. I think it, it, it is a silver, you know, there, there's been so much tragedy with, the, with COVID, with the pandemic, but it's a silver lining that not just staff, but also elders, you know, people have embraced it. And, you know, once, once you get used to it, it just becomes part of, uh, of, of how you operate. And so I think it's a really, you know, it's a very positive thing in a, uh, in a world that's full of tough stuff. So again, for those that have been around for a while, they, they hear you and I talk about umbrella drinks. We'll hold that to, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll save that for the next one. But I really, I'm honored. I really am thrilled to be doing this because there's nothing, at the end of the day, we love our technology, but it's the, it's the staff and the communities that, that make it come to life. It's just a piece of metal until somebody, uh, it's a tool that, that the people that you'll see in the, in the call today are the, you know, they're why we've been successful. And it's, uh, it's, it's fun to be able to get their perspective. Well, it's all oh, yours. I, I have one, one very specific thing. I just got this new layout. This kind of new layout to do my webinars with. And I want to have something besides this little plant. I'm thinking maybe a goldfish or something. If somebody sends me an idea that I use, I'll send them a hundred dollar gift card. So I'm looking Woo! for interesting things to have next to my head in my, uh, in my webinars. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look forward to the creativity of who you I, have in the audience. Well, this is a creative group. So uh, let the creativity flow, guys. <laughs> All right, Jack. So All right. So uh, I think that, the, uh, again, as I was just saying, that, that technology for technology's sake is meaningless. And uh, we're, we're delighted to be able to bring uh, two and hopefully three folks on that can kind of give their perspective I really don't want this to be about IN2L. They are power users of IN2L. We can talk about that a little bit, but really more just want to kind of, for everybody in the audience, get the perspective of people who have embraced technology, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and how to make it relevant for, uh, for your own community. So ladies, why don't you hop on and I'll do a quick introduction. One of my favorite things about People in the South, as they call me, Mr. York. So why don't you all introduce yourself? We'll start with Ms. Sheila from Tennessee. And Olivia's there. Is there. All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Sheila Edwards. I'm the Activities Director at Ave Maria Home Greenhouses in Bartlett, Tennessee. All right, Paula. Hi, my name is Paula. I'm at the Jewish Home Assisted Living in Rivervale, New Jersey. Um, and we opened our greenhouse in October, and I am the guide. Before that, I was in activities. All right. And Olivia? I'm Olivia Henson from the Greenhouse Cottages of Belmead and Paragold. Um, I've been here for six years, four as a CNA, and two as the activities director. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to, I mean, I think all of us are used to all these different webinars and all these things happening. So I really would like this to be very conversational more than you just have to stick if if somebody says if paula if you say something and miss sheila you want to add to it you know there, there's no rules to this let's just try to get it going and uh, and make it work and uh to get started uh, paula i want you to tell the audience something about yourself that nobody in your community knows about you so they do know that I play the guitar. What they don't know is that this June will be 25 years. All right. What's your what's your go-to song? Um, it depends on the day, but I play a lot of classic rock. All right. A lot All of right. classic rock. Okay, Olivia, you haven't had a chance to prepare for that question. What's something that no one in your community knows about you? That's hard because I'm pretty much an open book <laughs> with everything <laughs> about me. Um <laughs> I, I would say, honestly, I don't know. I guess I would say I'm big in um, 
the research of ADHD because I have ADHD. So I am in a lot of groups pertaining to that. And I speak with a lot of people over ADHD to help people in my community better understand their diagnosis. All right. That's awesome. Miss Sheila. Well, I'm kind of like Olivia. I'm kind of open book. Most people know uh, about my life, but very few know that back in the day, I was actually the disco queen in Paris, Tennessee at 2001 Disco. So I guess that's my love for music and dancing with the elders. So the, the disco queen, Miss Sheila, the disco queen. We've got a, we've got a theme for our, uh, our conversation here. So uh, let me go ahead and start with you, Paula. What, you know, it, it, again, it's a, it's a serious topic, but you, but I think there's joy to be found in this. I mean, what, as, as the pandemic kicked into gear and you had to totally look within your, your greenhouse of how do you change the, the model? How do you deal with COVID? How do you keep people engaged and connected? How did you use technology in that, just in that venue, in that, in that context, what worked and what didn't work? Well, we were able to start, our greenhouse opened in October. So the pandemic was well underway by the time we opened. We actually opened in the middle of it. Um, so we had some opportunity to work on that beforehand, but we would just take our equipment and play with it. And um, you know, that, that IN2L was helpful. We could go into each elder's apartment. We could come up with something for each of them to do. Um, and before we, you know, can have large groups, you have that one-on-one -on -one situation. And I think that was the hardest thing was to create programming for everybody on a one-to-one -one basis versus being able to do something larger. And it gave us the opportunity to get to know them better, but we used anything we could, an iPad, the IN2L, a computer, Alexa's in every room. So we have used technology so much more than we did before because you know sometimes just walking into someone's apartment and turning on some music for them is what they need that day yeah well, what's an example of something you learned about you know as you just said something you learned about somebody that you probably wouldn't have learned about them with not for the the pandemic oh there's so many different things exactly what kind of music somebody likes somebody can tell you ah oh, you know hey i like this kind of music but now you're learning exactly what artists and why you get to have those those deep conversations with people that you don't always have an opportunity to have so while other folks were being pushed away from their elders by not being able to come in when we could we got the opportunity to get to know them even better than perhaps we would have so when we opened our greenhouse we were ready to go because we knew every little thing about all yeah, of this that's great um uh, uh, Olivia, what, you know, in that kind of the same vein, what, what reason, were most of the, the elders embracing the technology or most resistant or was it, was it a mix? Um, I would say there's more that have accepted it than resisted it, but there are a few that just don't want anything to do with it, but most of them love it. And so how, when, when you find people that were resistant to it, were there any tricks, any, uh, any, any tricks you learned or how, how did you, how did you overcome that? Um, a lot of the ones that resisted it, um, they either had hearing problems, which made it difficult for them to hear on the iPad. So we would use, um, earbuds. I have special headphones specifically for, uh, people who have a hard time hearing that plug up into it where it really makes it loud and that kind of helped and uh for others it was just because they've never used technology and they didn't want to try they felt they would never understand yeah so miss miss sheila I mean, those are great answers miss sheila the disco queen what uh when, when you know just see I mean, all of a sudden i mean was it was the when the pandemic hit from your perspective was it more of a overnight change of everything or, or did it happen relatively you know in a, with some kind of you know just kind of a flow to it and then how did you how did you react how, how did what was the first thing you did from a technology standpoint actually a year ago today is when they called and said shut down no visitors and that's when i started we set up a special uh facebook page so that we could do the video chats with the uh families and it built 
very quickly, right now we have uh, over 180 family members that we video chat with weekly. And it's just been, like I said, we, our elders, the average age is 80 to 85. So my, my key to getting them to do this is I told them we were like the Jetsons. I know I, I repeat that all the time, but yeah. they love that because they remember that show. Um, we have some still that's not quite um, smitten with it because they don't want other people seeing them. But once we go in there, we'll go set it up and get their family on there ready to talk to them. And we'll say, come on, they're in here, you know, ready to see you. And we'll take them in there and then they, they'll talk for days if we don't stop them. So but, what did you say? You said you 180 per fam what? Family members that we video chat with per week. How, how, do, you, how do you choreograph that? Um, we have eight houses that are open. I have eight of the IN2L computers in each, uh, you know, we have one in each house right now. Plus we have iPads for the ones that are in quarantine. Um, we have a certain day that we're in each house and I have a list that's with the computers or with the iPad that shows the family members for each elder, you know, what time they want to be called and who to call. And I mean, it's worked great. Now, that, it. that, is, that is incredible choreography to be able to balance that, that right. much. So I mean, have the, have the elders like, I mean, for so many people, it has to be kind of an alien experience trying to talk into this computer screen, a whole new experience. Is, was there a lot of reluctance to it or was it pretty there was at first several of them, like I said, they would look at the screen and go, is this real? You know, because they wasn't understanding that you could actually talk back and forth. And like Olivia said, we did have a lot that were hard of hearing. And we still, we try to use the IN2L because it has the Bose speaker and they, we can turn it up where they can actually really hear the iPad. You know, we do have a problem with some of them hearing that. Um, but like I said, they have embraced it. They, they will be running through the house and it's not even their day and they'll say, hey, can I call so-and-so? And we're like, sure. And we'll go and we'll run, hook up the, you know, the unit and just let them sit and talk because they love doing that. We do have entertainers that's been doing the virtual entertainment for us and they do it over the Facebook Messenger so we can save it and we can go into each house and continue to show it as many times as they want. Um, you know, we're doing Bible study that way. Our deacon is connecting, you know, with the houses. And, you know, right now, Tennessee, we just got opened up for outside visits. We're back. We've been in phase one all this time. So we're in phase two of this. So everything that we're doing for them, you know, we're trying to do over the units. And we do have our setup where we can actually plug them up into the big TV in the hearth room. So if it's something for a performance, you know, everybody can watch it. Wow, that that's that's remarkable. That that much going on. So, let, let me just ask this kind of question generically, and, and any of you, you know, hop in. I think that there, you know, from my perspective, looking at what so many of our our customers were doing, it would be almost a daily uh, extreme of emotion. That there would be a, a joyful email you see of a of a connection uh, of maybe watching a of seeing a, a, a new grandson or whatever. And then you'd have end of life, just really poignant experiences that I'd love any of you to kind of jump in with, with a joyful experience through the technology, and then something maybe that was poignant or moving or something that was that was making a difficult situation better. So I don't know if anybody wants to jump in or if you want me to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, we've had all three. Um, like I said, we've had people connect where they haven't seen people in years that's lived out of state that we were able to connect them that they never thought they would get to see again. Um, I do have a picture and I was gonna show this up. This is a lady and that was a picture I took the first time she had seen her sister who lived up in Vermont in 19 years. And wow. the, just the expression on her face, you know, you can see, I don't know how good you can see that right there but she is just ecstatic that she was, you know, laughing. They, they had tears of joy, you know, and they, it was, it was amazing. And like I said, we've had where we had a gentleman that saw his brother right before he passed and he, he got to attend the funeral virtually. So he would have closure. Uh, I did have a lady that her 
uh, daughter was in the delivery room with her daughter, her granddaughter, and she got to see her newborn great granddaughter, you know, just as soon as they got cleaning her up. So it's been a great experience, you know, for our elders, because they never thought that they would be able to see a lot of people again. And they've actually got to see a lot of them that they never thought that they would see. So it's, it's been a really good experience and we've really grown close with the families during this. Yeah. Uh, Olivia or Paula, anything you want to, any stories to share that from, you know, on either extreme. We've had people be able to go to small weddings, um, a bris. Uh, so th- they've still been able to go and attend some of these things that they haven't been able to do um, in the past, it, you know, I, as, as many of the sad things, I haven't seen as many of those really happening over here. Um, but it's been, it's been more joyful things. We have, um, one woman who she had a companion way before she came here and hadn't seen her in a while. They connected and this woman still likes to entertain her. So she'll put out all the things to make cookies and she'll sit there and she'll say, okay, we put in the flour and now we put in the chocolate chips and she'll mix them up and then she'll wrap up her video visit. But then a couple of days later, cookie shows up for her. So she bakes the cookies with her and then sends them. So it's actually, you know, joyful things, you know, are different for every person. And so, you know, that brings her joy twice, even though she doesn't remember that she made cookies with her a couple of days ago. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, Olivia, anything, anything you share along those lines? Um, we've done FaceTimes for several birthday parties. Um, we had one lady do one for her granddaughter's wedding. Um, other than that, that's been it. Birthday parties and that one wedding time that we did a FaceTime, but that was I, I see a picture there of our system doing mm-hmm. some, uh, little, 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 uh, slot machine action. We, we, we haven't figured out yet how to distribute any money through that, but uh, we know it gets a lot of use. It looks yes. like she's got two, two grand there. That's impressive. Yes, they love playing the slots up here. Yeah. And that was one of from one of our FaceTimes that we did um, a birthday party. Uh, her family was very sad they couldn't attend it because they do every year, and this was a good way for them all to join. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that's the same lady uh, when she first got to see her son over FaceTime. And she was so, we actually, I think we all cried. Yeah, that's, that's, that is, that, that's great stuff. So how, how are the families about, about all of that? I mean, go ahead. If you got, you want to tell any stories, go ahead and keep going. Oh, no, I'm done. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I'm just wondering like with, with family members, you know, and just everything, you know, what this was like for them. How did you communicate to them that you had the technology available and, and you just get the interaction there when obviously I'm sure they're all concerned about their loved ones and, uh, and that, that you had the ability to communicate that way? Um, we shared it on Facebook and also we called several families. Um, mostly the families called me and we set up times weekly that we wanted to call. And I put it all on a calendar and every day I had three or four families that I would call to FaceTime and I just had it on a big calendar and they knew just to call me and we'd get it down or text. They text me a lot. But what, what are some things that, uh, I'll, I'll start with you, Sheila. What are some things that, that you do differently now that as things get back to normal, you're going to keep doing that, that things that have you never would have thought of maybe before the pandemic, technology, et cetera, uh, anything come to mind along those lines? We, we've already had the request that even after the pandemic's over and we have visitation for the people that live out of state or out of the city or out of, you know, the country even, that we continue the video chats, um, you know, and we are going to keep that in place. Like I said, I, I tweak the list every week, you know, with people that leave or, you know, do pass away and then all the new missions come in, we tweak that. But we are continuing, you know, to keep this as part of their activities weekly. Yeah, that's fascinating. Have you had the, you know, when you, when you try to plan 
thing, like one, one thing I heard was, uh, I talked to a community last week that it said when they were in person doing um, like family nights or this or that, they'd get like five or six people. And all of a sudden now when they're doing those same things virtually, you know, they're getting dozens of people to show up for what we're kind of like family council events or things like that. Have any of you done did it, anything like that where the other families are, are you communicating to more than one individual family? Well, I have, like I said, I have the special page it's set up It's that's separate from the Ave Maria page. It is just for the, the immediate family that does video chats, but it is a Facebook page. And on that, if we have any information that needs to go out, you know, we will send that just out to the families to get their response. And I did want to kind of throw this out there because this is something I think that every community should do. Uh, you can have a little contest, you know, and we did that with the staff here is I got them, the families to send me baby pictures of their elders. And after the staff, you know, guessed who they were, I posted it on the Facebook page and I divide them into each house. And then we had the families guess who these people were. And we've just been doing little interactive things like that with the families that keeps them interested, you know, as what's going on here and what we're doing. Um, like I said, I, I get tickled. This is my one family that they like to do the the Snapchat, you know, the little <laughs> filters on everything, and they're like, and 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 their mom is like, "Would y'all stop that? That's so ugly," you know. And but it has been such a fun time for the families to all come together, and that that's what we've enjoyed. It's not just about having one person on there for Skype or one person on the FaceTime when we do the video chat, you know, or the Zoom we can get the whole families on there. Um, you know, this is one that we did and um, they took a picture for me when at Thanksgiving. And then I had another family at Christmas that they had like 30 people that was nationwide on there for the, you know, had a big Christmas yeah. meeting with everyone. And they took a picture and they said, actually sent that out as their Christmas card. You know, so it was, like I said, all the families have really come together and trying to embrace the technology and, I, I tell the story, you know, I have the ones that take the, take us outside with them to feed the chickens or they, you know, to see the gardens or to the ocean. Everything has just been so wonderful that the families have embraced and giving back to the elders during this time. Yeah, because you were talking about that last week. To, to, to tell the chicken story. I love the chicken story. Tell, tell the chicken story. <laughs> right. Um, he has several chickens and he has, feeds them mealworms. And he will go get a handful of those mealworms and take out there and he'll put the camera, his phone down right in front of the chickens. And when he starts giving those mealworms to them, they talk like they've never talked. And, and it's so funny because the elder, she gets right up in the camera and she says, talk to me, talk to me, you know, and because they can hear her talking to yeah. She thinks it's hilarious because she thinks they're really just talking to her because she does have to mention bless her. But she loves the chicken. So we try to do that at least once a week, you know, where he'll go outside and feed the chickens so she can hear the chickens talking to her. Oh, that that is awesome. Have, have any of you, I mean, it, it, there has been such a, you know, just so much negative publicity about nursing homes over the last year. You know, I, I should say maybe with the exception of the greenhouse, you guys have done such a good job with the different stories that you've been able to tell. But I'm just curious if any of you have had any kind of media outreach for these really cool things that you're doing, you know, on a, on a, on a daily basis. We did have um, Channel 13 here in Memphis. They came out and um, did a story about how we were staying connected and everything that's going on with the greenhouses during the pandemic. And also Channel 24, I actually took the iPad over and the lady interviewed our uh, president of the resident council. And she showed them, you know, cause we're at that point we were still sheltering in room, everything she had been doing in her room to stay busy and how we were providing, you know, the video chats with her family and everything. Okay, yes, that, well, that's great. And so Susan just popped up a second ago, and uh, that means I'm supposed to start winding things down. So I'll give you kind of all of you a chance to kind of, you know, you know, maybe just just give a just I mean maybe a closing comment about what uh, you know what you what you think technology can do, and just in terms of the whole experience for families, for residents, for you guys, for volunteers, whatever. Just 
just just uh, maybe there's people on the fence out there in the audience that are wondering is it worth all the pain so you're you're there sheila why don't you go ahead and go first and then we'll go to paul and then olivia it is worth you know it, it is a lot of work but it's worth every minute because you are getting closer to your families and they're getting closer to you and they're they're they will come to you and discuss things that normally they wouldn't discuss as far as ways to help their elder um like i said this is a process we're going to keep in place to make sure you know that we stay connected with the families as well as the elders being you know connected with their families so like i said we we absolutely love it it has been a lifesaver for us this past year Okay, that's great. And th then, Paula, any any comments that you would have? I, I think uh, technology has been a lifesaver for a lot of people. Um, when you're watching the TV and, and you're hearing all these big scary things about what's going on in the world and then told that you need to stay in your apartment um, and you can't have your family in to see you, that's that's terrifying. And so it's given us a way to open that door back up. But beyond that, we can also reach, like Sheila said earlier, these family members, maybe in California or Texas or out in the middle of you know nowhere compared to where we are and, and be able to, to connect people where we couldn't before. It's an amazing thing. Yeah, that's, a, that's awesome. And uh, Olivia, anything from your perspective? Um, well, I'm, we're gonna continue doing it, but it's brought us all together as a community, we're not just Bellmead and then that's our elders. We're just one big family now. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And it, uh, it it's funny, Sheila, because I do a lot of presentations and I I have a great picture of uh, George Jetson on the on the TV. <laughs> and it, right. my, my, my two go to's are the Jetsons and Star Trek are kind of like if you want to look at the future, just go back and look at at those shows of, of technology and, and, and what it would be. And so, uh, you know, I, I never want to make these, uh, you know, webinars like this or conversations like this, a, a IN2L, you know, plug, but it really, honestly, I, I started the company with my brother and a friend of mine 21 years ago. And it was, uh, it really, through all of the, the challenges of last year, it was really, really the most rewarding year that we had as a company to just hear all these stories of how people were using uh, our technology as a way to connect people uh, in ways that we never would have thought of when we when we started the company. And so uh, again, there's a few IN2L questions I see floating out there. I would, I everyone, uh, if there's some way that um, soon we can get my email address out there, I'd rather IN2L specific questions just kind of address one-on-one uh, -on -one and we're happy, I love having those conversations, but but really, it's a all three of you are are you know you're you you know you're your representative of the of the thousands of, of people over the years that have taken what we do and and made it come to life and kind of taught us how to make it better and, and to see what you've done through the pandemic and you're still smiling and you're still standing and you 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 put up with you know something none of us could have predicted. And yet you're able to, to thrive through that. And so I really, I, I do think, uh, as Susan and I have talked many times over the years, I just think that the greenhouse model is a perfect fit into the whole world of the pandemic. And I also think, frankly, that IN2L is a perfect fit within the, the greenhouse model as a way, I think, I'm not sure if it was you, Sheila, or Olivia that was saying this, but I think just that ability and I always use the analogy of, 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 of myself that I, I've always been a big Bruce Springsteen fan and ever since I was in my teenage years. So it's not like I'm going to turn 85 and all of a sudden, you know, really give me the carpenters. I mean, we, we all have, we all have what makes us tick. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter where we are cognitively. We have a human thirst to stay connected. And I think that Technology is a way to do that. It's remarkable what's happened over the last uh, year, last few years, frankly, of the technology itself. And it's fascinating to look at, at, at where it's all going. So anyway, that's pretty much all. This is why I'm looking for Susan to pop back up again. Um, I did you know, I did want to give a great, a quick shout out to Claire Lucas Warren, who put all of this together and, and got all you guys together and found the right, uh, the right folks to be on the show. 
I think, Claire, you're hiding in the background somewhere, <laughs> but thank you for putting it all together. And uh, again, you and I have known each other for a long time, too. So it's fun to have these relationships keep thriving. And you, uh, anyway, you guys are an inspiration and, uh, and thank you for all of that. And I'm hoping that somebody comes up with what should be next to my face on my, uh, on my screen. So go ahead, yeah. Susan, take it away. Yeah, so Jack, first of all, you'll be glad to know we did have a few suggestions um, and I'll save those for the end. But what I okay. first want to do is give an incredible shout out and thank you to three exceptional activity directors. And as you were talking, one reason I popped up a few minutes ago is because technology did not work for me and I got booted off and, <laughs> and then had to figure out how to get back on in time to kind of close this out. But that having been said, I think what struck me was the incredible role that the activity director has played, especially during the pandemic. But I would argue throughout um, history, your role is just so critically important. And so I want to just, yes. Jeff, I have been in activities um, up until last October. It was about eight years, but I'm not the director. I'm actually the greenhouse guide here. Yeah, okay. we've, we've had the same director for all that, that time. I just wanted to give her credit. To clarify. Well, well, good. Thank you for uh, that clarification. But what I want to just drill down a little bit on, I'd love to know, it sounds like each of you all are extremely um, creative in kind of the approaches and the individualization that you did to support the people that are in your homes. And that's such a part of what Greenhouse is all about. The other thing that struck me was the intention um, and the systems and the process and everything that you put together to make sure that this, we just didn't talk about it, but that there was real intention and systems and processes to make it work. Um, my question to each of you is what was the role of leadership? Um, and Sheila, I'll start with you. You know, I'm just fascinated by the fact that you have a system in each of your eight greenhouse homes and you've got tablets to support those that were in quarantine. So really curious, and I'd love to hear from each of you. I happen to know the leaders at each of your organizations, but talk a little bit about uh, the role that leadership has played in helping you to be successful with what you just described. Well, like I said, when we got locked down, you know, a year ago today, um, oh. Becky just came to me and said, I need you to set up some kind of communication you know, with the families, with the elders. So, you know, I, I actually got with, um, I know Jack didn't want it, but with my IN2L uh, technical support to find out the best way to do it through the system since we already had them in each house. So we came up with the best way was going, you know, through the Facebook uh, and through Skype. So that's, you know, what we did because at the time we didn't have the Zoom capabilities on these. Um, and I just, kind of ran with it from there. I just sat down and started calling everybody and saying, hey, do you have this connection? If we didn't, I learned how to set up the dummy accounts and we have, you know, set up a lot of dummy or ghost accounts for people in order for them to video chat. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've learned how to tweak it as I went. And, and like I said, we've got it down pat now, you know, but I keep the list on each computer and we've got it separated, you know, by room. So that, you know, the Shabazine in the house, if one of them wants to, you know, call the, her elders family, she can. And on the other one, you know, they, he can, you know, whoever is calling. Like I said, I try to put the times on there and we've given them days. We started out trying to do it, you know, a couple of times a week. And as it grew, because we started out with maybe 30, like I said, now we're up to 180, fam 180 family members a week that we video chat with. So we've learned to, you know, like I said, make it a homecoming every week, as many as we can get of the family members on at the same time. You know, they all get to see each other. They all get to catch up for what's happened for the week, you know, because they may live in different states or different cities. And it's just been a great experience, you know, because like I said, Frank has given us, you know, um, all the support that we needed they did get us some IN2L tablets that we've been using, you know, also, and uh, Becky did get some more iPads, you know, so that the ones that are in quarantine, we can take those in and do the FaceTime and, and Zoom and things like that with them. 
That's that's great. And what about uh, the rest of you, Paula or Livia? We have we have done great. Um, our activities director, Julie, um, in the beginning, along with one of our social workers and one of the other activity girls, they started working together to to build the 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 initial appointments that we had. And then it was that learning curve, you know, oh my goodness, is it a FaceTime? Is it a Skype? Is it a Zoom? And and all of those things. Um, so I was actually fortunate enough where those things were already scheduled and I was able to take the equipment and go and learn how to use it. Um, as we began to open up the greenhouse, um, I was able to then teach the staff more about how to use the technology. And, you know, they're, they, the families reach out to me. I think uh, Sheila had said it earlier, I, I now know more about these families just from contacting them to set up appointments than I ever would have, um, which is amazingly helpful when it comes for us helping our elders. And um, families reach out to me and we schedule them. Some of them have standing appointments. Some like to reach out weekly and we're able to accommodate them. And um, our staff is now able to just grab a device and go ahead and, and help with those calls. That's incredible. That's uh, really great. And I like the uh, relationships that you're developing with the family members. So Olivia, I want to hear from you. Then I want to kind of go back and talk a little bit about um, it's, it can't be dependent on just you to make all these things happen. So I'd love to hear after you, Olivia, talk about leadership, maybe you can also talk about how you empower the other staff members to kind of support those connections so it doesn't just fall to you alone. So, Olivia? Um, for every, right now, everything I pretty much do, uh, there are a few in the houses that will um, take initiative and set FaceTimes up for me and stuff like that, but, um, Families pretty much call me daily and they tell me when they want to talk, what day, and I put it on my calendar and I have the two, it's never too late systems, and then I have two iPads, and then if all of those are in use, I use my phone to keep these phone calls going so we don't run out of time. That's great. Thank you. So, Paula, I saw you nodding your head about, you know, how you empower others to kind of support those um, engagements. Yeah, you know, it's it, the rest of the staff also, now that they're more comfortable using the technology themselves, they hop on and they're smiling, you know, hi, I'm here with, with mom, Do, you know, how you doing today? They have a nice conversation with them. Um, you know, sometimes you get families that say, oh, does my mom need anything? Oh, yeah, we could use some soap. I mean, that actually helps out in the long run. That's a message somebody else doesn't have to, but you also don't want to take away from a family visit. So it all depends on the family. And, and now that we know the families almost as well as we need to know our elders, we know when we hop on with somebody, the kind of conversation that you'll also have with them. So the staff members are not just turning it on and hiding from the, the, the screens. They're hopping on and, and getting to know those family members as, as well. And, you know, again, those long distance family members that have just been a voice on the phone for a long time now have faces and it makes a big difference. Right. Yeah, you know, Susan, I don't know. Go ahead. Susan, I'm going to say, I mean, for me, on a bit from a maybe more of a business standpoint, it's funny, like having a like a, a conference call feels so dead. You know, it's like if you the I mean, I'm completely you know, I, I get that everybody has kind of Zoom fatigue, but it is it's remarkable just how we've all changed how we do everything, and you know, why should it be different in a in a greenhouse? Yeah, there's a power about being able to um, see each other as opposed to just listen. And, yeah. you know, we've said it, it's just so much easier to stay focused and to, to really for family members who haven't been able to actually see and touch their loved one to be able to connect visually, I think is far better. I can't even imagine going through a pandemic without some sort of enabling technology to be able to see each other. 
So Sheila, any comments from you in terms of how you empower others to support the technology and engagement? Well, we did train every uh, shot of scene in each house on how to use it. I do have, like I said, I've got my trusty book that has the list. And we also have the instructions for anybody that, that's not familiar with it on how to get on and do, you know, do the calls. Um, I do have one of my greenhouses that the afternoon staff, they live for it. You know, they, they want to do the calls, you know, because like um, Paula and Olivia just said, if there's something that they need to tell the family that they need them to bring or the family says, hey, do they want this? They love that interaction where they can actually talk to them themselves without having to go through different channels, you know, to, to, get, to get the message across on what they need. But they have really enjoyed connecting, you know, the staff members have. And like I said, used to, you know, especially for the new ones that came in during the pandemic, they weren't able to see the family members. They've just been able to talk to them on the phone. So by connecting to them, you know, they are able to know who they are. So when we start the visits, they're going to, you know, as soon as they walk through the door, they're going to know who they are. And it's, it's been a great tool. Everybody just absolutely loves it here. That's so exciting. Well, this has been an incredible team. I'm going to invite Marla on to see what questions might have come in. And while Marla is joining, Jack, not to derail us, but the comments that I did see for you for making your um, little space more attractive or engaging. Um, a bobblehead of Jack York was one of the comments that I saw. I, <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> um, a Steve Martin arrow headset. I thought that would be oh, equally oh, interesting. That, that's that. Oh, that's that's very. I can exciting. see it. Like I. You prefer something a little bit more um, sophisticated. Stack of books, your favorite books, and a flower arrangement or a lily plant. So you can kind of I, I sort it say, out. And I, I do have to say I'm more of a Steve Martin arrow through his head than a flower arrangement kind of guy. And I, I do want to call out and uh, Camille Rogers from Manuel keeps texting me things about Bruce Springsteen to distract me. So tell her to please... To, to please just wait till this is over before she tries to like, get me to lose concentration. And I do. Before <laughs> yeah, Marla, one, one thing, I just, so I don't forget to say this. For all three of you, I would love to be on a Zoom call with your elders. That is the coolest thing in the world for me. So let's get a separate email going. But I, I love okay. I love the stories that we hear and, and just the freelancing of it. So feel free to, to, to reach out. I, just wanted, I didn't want to forget to say that. Okay. Well, we whatever you do, record that be, or do a picture or something and post it. We'd love to be able to uh, promote that as well. All right, Marla, what's come up in the questions? Well, before I forget, I, I want to ask this question kind of based on just piggybacking off what Jack said is, have you done any video calls linking elders between your houses? So I, I'm guessing that you know, they've been restricted from visiting. So has that, have you had opportunity to do that? Has there been a, an interest in doing that? We have it. We have at the cottages at Bellmead. Um, we've done it a couple times. We have um, family members that are in separate cottages and they will FaceTime each other. And then we had um, a man and woman who were, boyfriend and girlfriend they didn't like the um the label but <laughs> they were boyfriend and girlfriend and once we closed down they were very sad that they weren't able to see each other because he had ride down there on his motor scooter every day to see her so facetiming with them made it a lot better on them as well nice we, nice. Did, we did have several that uh couples that one lived in our assisted living and one lived here in the greenhouses and we did do, get those together, you know, to visit that way. Yeah, and, you know, and Marla, from an IN2L standpoint, that is such a roadmap for us is to, because, you know, you can, you can get 20 people together, 10 people together, 80 people together, and they can still feel lonely. But if you can connect, who are the guys in the same battalion in the Vietnam War, who went to the same church? I mean, it, it's, it's fascinating 
what that can be. And I think people's acceptance of Zoom and this kind of stuff really opens up a whole different way to deal with people who, you know, who want to connect with people that they're, you know, they have similar interests with. Right. So along with that, do you have guidance? Because in all transparency, I've, we've, we've been using Zoom calls, like with my family, because um, we're spread out all across the country. And it gets a little wonky with people all on at the same time. So do you, and my father is hard of hearing. So do you have suggestions? Or is there a limit to how many people should be on? I think that's going to depend on the elder. Mm -hmm. um, how many different faces can they look at at the same time? Do they have vision problems? Do they have hearing problems? Um, you know, are, are they going to be, are they really going to pay attention either way? Or is it going to make them really, really happy just to see the faces of all of their families in, in one place? I had one woman who said to me that her two children have not been in the same place with her in so long. And it's true. She has somebody who lives in another uh, country, somebody who lives um, in another part of our country. And so I just reached out to them and, and set up a, a video call. And even though it was only the three of them, I said, I have a surprise for you. And I sat her down and she just cried because yeah. that's what she asked for. And she had been needing that. So I think, you know, that call with two people was just as important as a call with 30 people for somebody else. It depends on the person. It does. It does. A very person-centered approach. I love it. Uh, okay, enough of my questions. Here's a couple um, here. Uh, so first, a praise. Activity people in the U.S. have truly reinvented the wheel. They've done such an amazing yeah, job. All right. Lots of praise yeah. and respect. Um, so here's a question. Where do you start to include technology and social engagement programs that's currently limited to just phone calls right now? So how do you get started? Well, for me, I call each family member and ask them what connections they had as far as any type of social media. If they had Facebook or if they did FaceTime or if they did Skype or, you know, some would say I only have access to Zoom. So we would, you know, cater to whatever their need is to get them connected. So, you know, that's, that's your first step is just calling and asking them what they, what they need. Good idea. Anything to add, Olivia or Paula? Um, I called for my older family members, you know, that had wives or husbands out here. I contacted their children. Um, I had them help them set up a Skype or a Zoom. Um, if they didn't have a, an, op, an Apple product, uh, I downloaded Google Duo and I had their children show them how to use these apps so that they were able to contact their family members in here. Nice. I also found that some family members um, reached out themselves with equipment, whether it was an Alexa or um, we have somebody with a, a portal. Um, and so those families had those things, you know, sent out and set up here so that they had that access themselves and then built upon the video calls that we could do with our equipment on top of it. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm reluctant to talk about I and go, but we, we, we really saw such an issue with the hassle it takes to sign up with so many of these different things. And so to be able to have a tablet that you just touch your, you know, your, your granddaughter's picture, and then it just sends a text that she, on her phone, clicks the link of the text and she's talking to grandma, that we, we that the simplicity is such a big deal on, on both ends. Mm -hmm. Well, and along with that, there's a question about what specific advices have you found to be the most user-friendly? I and 2L. <laughs> <laughs> so the I and 2L, the iPad, and um, my computer, I think, have been the easiest ones to, to use. And I will tell you for the I and 2L why I say that in the big units is because they're hands free. They've got the Bose speaker where they can hear. You can turn this thing up as loud as you want to. Uh, like I said, it's got the big monitor. People that normally can't see that we have two or three that are uh, legally blind, they can see their families on this computer screen. 
Um, like I said, we've we've been able to get people connected that we never thought we could, you know. And the iPads, like I said, we do have a problem with that because most of ours are hard of hearing. So it's it's very hard for them to to hear on the iPad. And it's very hard for them to hold it in one spot and keep their face in <laughs> where it's supposed to be. So here we set, we just set them here, camera zone, you know, it, it's all good. So the IM2L has been, like I said, our lifesaver during all this. Nice. And this question, I don't know if this is for Susan or Jack, but um, when you build a greenhouse, does it come with IM2L? Let's let Susan answer that one. <laughs> well, let's just say that is a work in progress. And it is something, um, interestingly, Mary is on the call as well. Mary and I just saw a really compelling demo. And we're in, in the midst of uh, conversations to really figure out how we can make that work. And I think the three ladies that are on the call today are great testimonials as to why we believe that would be important. And we lead with why would we do something like this? Well, I think you know they have just demonstrated why we think that would be a good idea. Um, so yes. And, and you know, I, I guess what I would say, and again, I'm always wary of saying these things, but really, at the end of the day, you know, we have big group systems, everything, and in between, and tablets. But the tablets, 350 bucks, 36 bucks a month, and you can have a picture of each elder right on the home screen and behind their picture, their music, their spirituality, where do they like to travel and their, and touch the picture of their granddaughter and their video chatting. So there's ways to get started that really aren't that much money. And we do, you know, our, certainly our vision is we'd love to really build a greenhouse specific product uh, over the next year or so that, that does become a part of that. And can I say also, exactly. there's, there's grant money out there. That's how we got our last four. Uh, we went through the state of Tennessee, through the civil penalties uh, group, because, you know, they will give you a grant to purchase these. And the only thing we have to do is give them a report for three years on it, how we're using it. And like I said, the money is out there in order to get the bigger units. Absolutely. Um, and last, real quickly, last question that came in, any challenges or barriers that you had to overcome? So whether it's related to technology or anything else? For me, it was just learning all of the different um, services, the, the FaceTime, which I hadn't used beforehand, the Skype, I had a little Zoom. So it was just learning all the different services because they're similar but different in the way that they work. Um, but once once it was learning all of those different ways to connect, really that was the biggest road bump when it came to technology was me actually learning how to use different things. And it wasn't that hard once you get the hang of it. Right. Nice. You know, once you tweaked your, your program and you got everything running smooth, you know, it's been a breeze. Like I said, we started out trying to call some of the same people two or three times a week, but we had to cut them down to once a week once we got all the families involved. Um, like I said, we have like 180 family members now that we video chat each week. So, you know, we do a little extra. Like I said, if we run through the house and they want to talk to somebody and it's free and we'll call them and let them talk. But it's, it's always been a learning experience and we do learn every day from it. You know, we try to add more and more each day that we can. All right. I, Susan. Yeah, thanks so much, Marla. I am just so grateful for your wisdom, ladies, for you sharing your stories. Jack, thanks for being, as always, an incredible sponsor and facilitator. Um, I have actually taken notes from today um, to really try to synthesize something and I'm going to work with Marla to try to create this tip sheet that could perhaps have a life of its own. So we may reach out to you um, and Claire, please stand by. We may be utilizing your support as well to really synthesize even more from my notes here. But um, this was really helpful. And uh, again, thank you so much for all the work you do each day during a, a really challenging time to be as creative um, and intentional as possible to create some amazing engagement. So 
Thank you, Jack. Thank you. All right. And thanks, uh, Susan. thanks so All much. You, and, Olivia, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jack. Thank you, Mr. Jack. Ms. <laughs> All Ms. right. Sheila. Okay. Excuse me, Ms. Sheila, of course. <laughs> So, Janet, do you want to get some of those slides for us before everybody oh, takes God. off? So, here's the deal. Marla and I are going to put it together. We are going to try to synthesize what we've talked about the last uh, several weeks. And, you know, what you heard today, as I mentioned, that tip sheet, you know, we're going to take little summaries, um, try to summarize each one of those sessions on the next uh, session, our final session where we put it all together. Um, we have a design series. This is by Perkins Eastman, and it really, it launches on April 6th. And this three-part series will really take a look at the design principles of greenhouse and human-centered design. On the next slide, you will hear a little bit about our podcast. We are really excited about our podcast. I think I have learned so much this year. This is where I really sought out thought leaders and really uh, drilled down on their wisdom and their expertise and what we need to do to leverage this moment to elevate elder care. So please take a listen on that. And I think we've got one more slide. Save the date. We have a Greenhouse Dementia Symposium. And three of my most favorite people, Dr. Jennifer Carson, Dr. Al Power, and Dr. Emmy Kyoto. Two of three you have already heard on this webinar series, but we're looking at a, a dementia symposium for September 14th. Save that date. You will hear lots of details coming soon. Thank you everyone once again for attending today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to our esteemed panel. Thank you to Jack as our sponsor. And thank you to all of you out there for going beyond better and really pushing against the status quo that settles for good enough. Thanks so much and we will see you in a couple of weeks for our final session. Take care, bye everyone.